YouTube, it's Thea, and this is going to be my March haul. Here, the huge stack of books that were acquired in March. So I'm just going to briefly show you guys um, all of the things that I got in March. These are in no particular order. I'm just going to start pulling them off the stack. Um, what I see here is actually my most recent purchase in March, and that is The Knife of Never Letting Go by Patrick Ness. This is the first book in the Chaos Walking trilogy. Um, I actually got this in my used bookstore, and it's like basically brand new. I really like these like new paperback editions. Um, basically this follows a town called Press Crescent Town. Um, everyone can hear everyone's thoughts in an overwhelming, never-ending stream of noise, but in a town where privacy is impossible, there is a secret so awful that Todd, still a month shy of being a man, must run for his life. But how do you escape when your pursuers can hear your every thought? I've been wanting to read this. Um, I know it is becoming, I believe it's becoming a movie soon or like a mini series, uh, but I definitely want to read this before it comes out. It has been on my TBR for a while. I've read a couple of things by Patrick Ness. Absolutely love his writing. So I'm really, really excited to hopefully dive into this very, very soon. I also picked up three graphic novels this month. The first one is Spider Gwen Volume 2, Weapon of Choice. Um, I know I, um, I, we did pick up Volume 1 in February, read it. Didn't love it, didn't hate it, felt like it was okay, um, but I'm um, willing to give this series another try and try to see if maybe it picks up a little bit. So we picked up Spider Gwen Volume 2. We also picked up Hell Blazer Volume 3, the inspiration game. This is part of the uh, DC Rebirth. I honestly have no idea what this series is about, but my boyfriend really likes the series and thought I would really like the Hell Blazer series because it's kind of got like a supernatural vibe. Um, so I decided to go ahead and we pick this volume up and give the series a read and try to get caught up. So we ended up picking up the third volume this month as well. What we picked up in March is one I am so excited to read, and that is The Shades of Magic Volume 1, The Steel Prince by V.E. Schwab or Victoria Schwab. I am so excited to read this. This is a prequel graphic novel series that takes place um, before Shades of Magic and it follows King Maxim and I am so excited to read this. I was so excited to find out we were getting more from the world of, from the whole like Shades of Magic world because it's one of my favorite fantasy series and I'm so excited to read this and graphic novels are such a fun way to like really be able to see the world a little bit more and so I'm really really excited to kind of see how her um, image of the world is portrayed in the series and I'm so so excited to read this very very soon. I have Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reads. This this is my um, March book of the month pick. I am so excited to read this. I read Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo a couple months ago. Absolutely fell in love with it. It's like one of my new all-time favorite books and I'm so so excited to read this. I know this is her newest release. Um, it's kind of done, I think it's done kind of in the same way where it's like an interview and Daisy is a um, girl coming of age in LA in the late 60s, uh, sneaking into clubs on the Sunset Strip, sleeping, sleeping with rock stars and dreaming of singing at the Whiskey Go-Go. The sex and drugs are thrilling, but it's the rock and roll she loves most. By the time she's 20, her voice is getting noticed and she has the kind of headless, heedless beauty that makes people do crazy things. Also getting noticed is The Six, a band led by the brooding Billy Dune. On the eve of their first tour, his girlfriend finds out she's pregnant and with the pressure of impending fatherhood and fame, Billy goes a a little Billy goes a little wild on the road. Daisy and Billy cross paths when a producer realizes that the key to supercharged success is to put the two of them together. What happens next will become the stuff of legend. I am so excited to read this. I think I'm going to try to get to it in April, but this was my choice for book of the month for March. I saw this as a choice as my March selection. I knew I had to pick it up, and I am so, so excited to pick it up very, very soon. Abarat Days of Magic Knights of War. This is the second book in the Abarat series. It does not match the Abarat 1 and 3 that I purchased last month, which not quite happy about, uh, but these are the additions that we are wanting to collect because um, but this has got the like beautiful artwork in it and the drawings and so this was the edition that we were you know, needing to pick up so we found this in my used bookstore. We knew we had to pick it up even though it doesn't match one and three. I'll have to suck it up and deal with it for a little bit but um, we picked this up because we are going to be reading the um, series over the next couple months so I'm really excited to do, um, I'm really excited to dive into this and these drawings and 
portraits are just absolutely gorgeous and I think it's going to really, really help um, fall in love with the store even more. So I'm really excited to get to this probably in the next couple months or so. so the Wonderland and the End of the World is the next book that I'd like to talk about in my haul. Um, this came from my March unboxing of Blue Spider Books, which if it's already up, I will link that down below. I have no idea what this book is about. I know um, Haru Miyakami is a loved author, written so many novels, and I know there's been a few that are like on the top of my TV that I really want to get to. This one is one I've never heard of. It seems really intriguing. It's like this like weird like sci-fi contemporary dystopian. Um, basically, it says here, across two parallel narratives, uh, Mirakami draws readers into a mind-bending universe in which Lauren Bacall, Bob Dylan, a split-brained data professor, a deranged scientist, his shockingly undemure granddaughter, and various thugs, librarians, and subterranean monsters collide to dazzling effect. What emerges is a novel that is at once hilariously funny and a deeply serious meditation on the nature and uses of the mind. This is sounds so intriguing, also very strange and weird, but I'm like super excited to read it and uh, branch out of my comfort zone a little bit and give this a try. And I, um, and I know that he's got so many books out and I know one of the ones uh, that he's written that's like on the top of my TBR is like 1Q84 um, and that, and this is kind of something that I have never, I've never heard of this one, but I'm super intrigued to read it. Next, I picked up Girls with Sharp Sticks by Suzanne Young. This I actually picked up from my um, local book festival. They actually got permission to sell it like two weeks early, so I had to take advantage of that. And she was also there, and she signed it. Um, this I have already read. I'll talk about more in my wrap-up, but I really, really enjoyed it. I gave it like four stars. Basically, it's just like YA kind of uh, sci-fi dystopian about this academy called the Innovations Academy where they are training um, well-behaved women for um, a life of being able to basically be like a good wife. But there's something not quite right at this academy and something that's just a little bit off. Um, and so you slowly kind of unfold the story. It was very interesting. It actually went where I wasn't expecting it to go. Um, I thought I had the twist figured out, but I didn't. And the twist was unexpected. So that always is good in my book. This is the first book in a long time that I've actually purchased, like brand new, full price. Um, but it was worth it highly enjoyable gave it four stars i got to meet suzanne she signed it and personalized it so i'm really really excited to now own this for my shelf this is actually the start of a series i don't know how many books is going to be in the series but um i will talk more about this in my wrap up but definitely i enjoyed this and I'm glad that i picked it up i also picked up and i darkened by kirsten white at my book festival um, because I went a little crazy at the book festival while um, buying full price brand new books uh, because all of these authors were going to be there and I wanted copies of the books to sign and I was not having luck fighting with the used bookstore so I came about a lot of like brand new books this month but I am really excited to own this. It has been on my TBR for like ever. Um, she actually did sign it and it says to Thea be a knife, Kirsten White. And this is a like gender swapped Vlad the Impaler retelling. It's like, I've heard it's really dark. Um, it's a really like dark YA fantasy that I'm really, really excited to read. It's been on my TBR forever. So I'm really excited to hopefully get to this very, very soon. The next book that I actually picked up full price brand new as well is The Bells by Danielle Clayton. This I teetered back and forth between um, buying or not, but she was there and I loved the way, and I just loved the way she presented herself about the book and how she talked about it and her thoughts and her um, inspiration behind writing it and I was so intrigued. I knew I had to pick it up. I knew I had to support her. So I ended up buying it. She ended up signing it. It says, To Thea, May You Always Find Beauty. And this book has been on my, my TBR for a couple, I think, since it came out. Um, and it was such an intrigue and it was so fascinated by the concept um, and I know people really, really enjoy this book. And so I figured it was high time that I picked it up. So I'm really, really hoping to get to this very soon and I'm so excited. This is a be um, this is a beautiful book and I love the end pages. I'm so excited to read it. I loved how she talked about how um, the whole like judging a book by its cover because basically you go in thinking this book is going to be one way when it's completely opposite because of how um, like fluffy and like 
pretty the cover is, but it's not like that in the book. Um, but how and how enticing this like cover is and what you expect going in and it's completely different and I love that idea because there's such a long sound of like judging a book by its cover and this kind of goes against that and so I'm so excited to read this and I'm really hoping that I can get to it in the next couple months. And the last full price like brand new novel that I got is Great for Mercy by Robin Lefevers. Yes, I actually did recently haul this book in my February haul, um, which is the original hardcover edition, but they had these beautiful new paperback editions, and I was like, yes, take my money, I love these covers, I wasn't going to buy it, but I couldn't resist, it's a gorgeous cover. I generally don't tend to buy paperbacks because I prefer hardcovers and I just don't like breaking spines on paperbacks but this book is absolutely gorgeous. This I figured would be something that I can just um, have on my shelves and I can read the hardcover edition since it's not like a really nice edition and it's like already kind of the spine is already cracked a little bit but this was a gorgeous edition. I was so tempted to buy the whole series but I was like no Thea you have to restrain yourself a little bit. Uh, so I just bought the first one. She did sign it. Uh, it says, Out of the Darkness Hope. And I have had this book on my TBR forever. I talked about it in my February haul as well. Um, but I'm really, really excited to own this beautiful paperback edition. It also comes with some extra stuff that's not in the hardcover original edition. Um, and I love, like, that, like, feel. It's just got that, like, nice new like paperback feel and I'm kind of obsessed so I couldn't pass it up I picked it up got a sign and I'm really hoping to get to it very very soon and the last um, stack of books here in this massive haul are um, all arcs that I actually picked up at my local festival as well they always have like a table just of arcs that you can get so I picked up um, quite a lot actually and all of these are really um, all of these books are some books that are already on my TBR they're all like brand new releases and I'm super Super excited to read. So the first one I see here is Watch Us Rise by Renee Watson and Ellen Hagen. I am so excited to read this like YA uh, contemporary, like feminist contemporary. Um, this is something that's been on my TBR for a while and I was able to find an arc and actually both of them were also there and they uh, did sign it. And it says, for all the ways you rise. So I'm really excited to read this. Basically, if you don't know, this follows um, Jasmine and Chelsea, who are best friends on a mission. They are sick of the way women are treated, even at their progressive NYC high school. So they decide, so they decide to start a women's rights club. They post their work online, poems, essays, videos of Chelsea performing her poetry. And Jasmine's response to the racial migra uh, aggression she experiences, and soon they go viral. But with such positive support, the club is also targeted by trolls. When things escalate in real life, the principal shuts the club down. Not willing to be silenced, Jasmine and Chelsea will risk everything for their voices and those of other young women to be heard. So excited to read this. I feel like it's going to have a lot of social commentary kind of on the political climate right now, um, but I'm really, really excited to read this. I also got an arc of Four Dead Queens by Astrid Schult, which gives me like major Three Dark Crowns vibes. Um, this is an arc of a February, I believe this came out in February. Uh, this came out in February of this year. This, I really don't know much about it. I know it's a YA fantasy that follows Four Queens. And when I heard about it, it had like gave me like major three dark crowns vibe, which I really enjoy. So I figured I would pick this up. Um, I've been itching for more YA fantasy, so I am really excited to dive into this soon as well. I also found an arc of the beauty of the moment. Um, she was also there and signed it, and it just says Thea live in the beauty of the moment. This is a YA contemporary, um, I believe it's own voices, about Susan. She's the new girl. She's sharp and driven and strives to meet her parents' expectations of, el of excellence. Malcolm is the bad boy. He started raising hell at age 15 after his mom died of cancer and has had a reputation ever since. Susan hasn't told anyone, but she wants to be an artist. Malcolm doesn't know what he wants until he meets her. This is sounds like a hard-hitting YA contemporary, which I'm always down to give, you know, give a read. Um, and I've heard really good things about this love the cover um and so i'm really excited that i was able to pick this up and i hope to give this a read probably in the summer when it warms up and i like to tend to read contemporaries more in the summertime but i'm really hoping to get to this this summer and an arc that i was so excited to find because i was gonna actually buy this book brand new 
Glad I didn't because I found an arc of Slayer by Kirsten White. Um, this is her most newest release. It's canon to the Buffy uh, to the Buffy universe. Love Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I've heard mixed things about the book, so I was kind of skeptical about buying at full price. But she was going to be there. It's her, you know, with but since she was there and it's her most recent release, I was willing to give, you know, give it a try. But I've found an arc. I'm so excited. She did sign it. It says, to Thea, to Thea, choose yourself. Um, so I'm really excited to dive into this. Uh, basically, if you don't know what Slayer is about, it follows Nina and her twin sister Artemis. Um, they grew up at the Watchers Academy. Um, and, the, the you know, the, the girls are trained in, as guides for the Slayers, which are girls gifted with supernatural strength, to fight the forces of darkness. But while Nina's mother is a member of the Watcher's Council, Nina has never embraced the violent Watcher lifestyle. Instead, she follows her instincts to heal, carving out a place for herself for the school at the, as the school medic until the day Nina's life changes forever. Thanks to Buffy, the famous and infamous Slayer, that Nina's father died protecting, Nina is not only the newest chosen one, she's the last Slayer ever. Period. So I'm really excited to read this. I love Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I've heard um, it's a lot of fun. I've heard it's gotten mixed reviews, but I am still really excited to read this. Um, hopefully very soon. I'll probably finish the series first since I'm working on season six. So I'll probably finish out the series and then go ahead and dive into this. But I'm really excited that I found a copy of this and she signed it. So I'm hoping to dive into this hopefully in the next few months. The next card that I actually was able to get as well is Death Preferred Blondes by Caleb Rohing. I remember reading about it and being really intrigued, but I don't remember what it's about off the top of my head. A rebel, uh, a rebel heiress must solve a family mystery with the help of jewel-thieving drag queens. Oh yeah, I remember now. Teenage uh, socialite Margot Manning leads a dangerous double life. By day, she dodges the paparazzi, paparazzi while soaking up California sunshine. By night, however, she dodges security cameras and armed guards pulling off high-stakes cat burglaries with a team of flamboyant young men in and out of disguise, she's in all the headlines. But then Margot's personal life takes a sudden dark turn, and a job to end all jobs lands her crew in deadly peril. Overnight, everything she's ever counted on is put at risk. Backs against the wall, the resourceful thieves must draw on their special skills to survive. But can one rebel heiress and four kickboxing drag queens withstand the slings and arrows of truly outrageous fortune? Or will a mounting sea of troubles end them for good? This sounds like it's so much fun. It's quite a chunker. It was bigger than I thought it was. But I've heard that this is a lot of fun. And I'm really excited to dive into this soon. I don't know when I'm going to get to this. Hopefully eventually soon. But I'm really excited to read this. The I got at my book festival is Black Enough, edited by Evie Zaboy. This follows, um, it's an anthology with all black writers. And it talks about um, growing up black in America. I feel like this is going to be a really hard-hitting book, but I'm really excited to read it. It's got some great people in here. Evie Zaboy, Brandi Colbert, Renee Watson, Jason Reynolds, Nick Stone, Danielle Clayton. Um, and so I'm really excited to read this. I love anthologies. I am all about supporting, you know, more YA uh, diverse diversity and YA-owned voices. So I'm really excited to pick this up and um, give this a read. Hopefully, probably... I'll probably save this for a readathon because um, I love anthology during a readathon, but I'm hoping to get to this this year. And the last book in this massive March haul is Crown of Feathers. Um, I am so excited to read this. I, um, like I keep saying, I'm itching for like just more YA fantasy. I'm just like, give it all to me. I'm hungry for YA fantasy. I love YA fantasy. Give it to me. Give it to me. I'll read it. Um, but I'm so excited to read this. Everyone is reading this. Everyone is loving it. Um, I believe it came out in February. I don't really know much about it, but I saw the cover. I've heard it's a, a great YA fantasy. That is all I really needed to know. Um, I had a sister once. In a world ruled by fierce warrior queens, a grand empire was built upon the backs of Phoenix Riders, legendary heroes who soared through the sky on wings of fire until a war between two sisters ripped it all apart. I promised her the throne would not come between us. Sixteen years later, Veronica is a war orphan who dreams of becoming a phoenix writer from the stories of old. After a shocking betrayal from her controlling sister, Veronica strikes out alone to find the writers, even if that means disguising herself as a boy to join the ranks. There's more, but I, um, that's all I need. I'm super intrigued, wanting to read it. 
heard about it a couple months ago. Um, it kind of just showed up. Um, I feel like it didn't get a lot of publicity, but it kind of just showed up on BookTube in the last couple months, and I'm super intrigued to read it, so I'm really excited that I found a copy of this ARC, and I'm going to go ahead and hopefully get to it very soon. The end of my March book haul, I don't even all fit. Um, I have like an entire stack on my floor still, but I am so excited to read all of these books that I've got. I'm so excited about everything that I picked up in March. Um, I'm so excited to dive into these. I feel like they're really going to help me get out of my slump. So I hope everyone had a great March. What did you guys call in the month? Have you read any of these books that I've talked about? If you have any thoughts, comments, and opinions down below, I'd love to chat about with I'd love to chat about it with you guys. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you are new here. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Happy reading, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!